G'day, my name is Matt. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we all exist on here in Australia and pay my respect to Elders past, present and emerging. It's important to acknowledge and keep the land in the forefront of our minds as I talk with you today because its survival depends on us. Over the last 50 years, humans have developed so fast with new technology that lasting impacts can be seen in the degradation of our natural world. The United Nations have set us a target, with 17 goals to reach by 2030. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is a call to action for people in all countries across the world, regardless of socio-economic status, race or religion. The 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, take aim to promote prosperity in both people and the planet. We are tasked with ending poverty by building economic growth and addressing social needs including education, health, social protection and job opportunities, while also attacking climate change and environmental protection head on. From gender equality to sustainable economics, the SDGs cover a wide range of social justice and economic responsibilities that we must all work together to achieve. Our focus for this video is SDG number 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. This is where things get tricky. Global economy is fueled by natural resources, and our consumption and production levels continue to destroy the planet. There are flaws in our system. For example, each year, 1.3 billion tonnes of food worth around $1 trillion goes to waste through overproduction, poor transportation, and harvesting practices. This equates to one third of total food production in the world. So why do we continue to produce so much that goes straight to waste? We've been programmed to consume, consume beyond our needs, even if it means we are not using everything to its full potential. Here are some statistics presented by the United Nations directly linked to SDG number 12. According to latest projections, the global population could grow to around 8.5 billion in 2030 and 9.7 billion in 2050. The equivalent of almost three planets could be required to provide the natural resources needed to sustain current lifestyles. Less than 3% of the world's water is fresh, of which 2.5% is frozen in Antarctica, Arctic and the glaciers. Humanity must therefore rely on 0.5% of all water for man's ecosystem and freshwater needs. Humankind is polluting waters and rivers and lakes faster than nature can recycle and purify. Land degradation, declining soil fertility, unsustainable water use, overfishing and marine environment degradation are all lessening the ability of the natural resource base to supply food. The food sector also accounts for around 30% of the world's total consumption of energy and accounts for around 22% of total greenhouse gas emissions. The statistics fall into three categories of water, energy and food under the SDG listing. As part of the SDG, the UN provide the statistics to paint the picture, but also provide 12 targets within responsible consumption and production. Please pause the video here to read through the 12 goals. I think it is important to put into perspective just how much we are consuming in modern times, compared to generations of the past. I'd like to explore humankind from primitive man over 1 million years ago in the past to compare energy consumption through the ages. The data presented here includes transportation, industry and agriculture, home and commerce plus food. So going back in time, we can see that energy use has been fairly gradual with the incline of technological advances, for example, the discovery of fire and advanced agricultural methods. There is one dramatic spike within the last 200 years, however, following the industrial age. The technology that emerged at this time, in particular the steam engine, allowed humans to begin to tap into fossil fuel sources rather than relying on more natural methods of energy production. The jump to an average person in the 1970s using 230 kcal of energy is around 115 times the energy use of primitive man per day. More sobering is the fact that we have more than doubled our energy consumption in just 50 years. At current rates, we stand no chance of sustaining Earth's natural resources as most of us know them. So now we can look backwards and forwards. Notice these trends of consumption that do not provide a basis of sustainability for us or future generations. We have all the research and technology to implement changes, so we must act now.
The idea of sustainable consumption and production is not new, however. In fact, in 1994, the Oslo Symposium defined sustainable consumption as the use of services and related products which respond to the basic needs and bring a better quality of life while minimising the use of natural resources and toxic materials as well as the emissions of waste and pollutants over the life cycle of the service or product so as not to jeopardise the needs of further generations. That's a lot of words there, right? Let me break it down into something more manageable. On one hand, we have what Fuchs and Lorac call weak sustainable consumption. This includes practices of efficiency, for example, using electric trucks to bring food to grocery stores or driving cars that use less or no petrol at all. This is labelled as weak sustainable consumption as the earth has a finite capacity for pollutants and these practices do not do enough to reduce the amount of resources we are using globally. In contrast, Fuchs and Lorac present the idea of strong sustainable con consumption. This is widespread change for every country in terms of consumption patterns and reductions in actual consumption levels in more industrialised countries like Australia. This has been noted as a politically controversial idea as it demands that production of goods and services be lessened as a whole instead of just more efficient consumption of those products. Returning to the idea of our sustainable development goal number 12, responsible consumption and production, both weak and strong sustainable consumption cover a few of the 12 targets. 12.1, allowing developed countries to take the lead in demonstrating sustainable consumption and production. 12.3, halving global food waste at retail and consumer levels. 12.5, reducing waste generation through prevention, reduction, recycling and reuse. And 12.6, encouraging companies to adopt sustainable practices. While these are specific examples, the chain of achieving one target leads into the steps towards another. But how are we actually doing in 2020? The Oslo Symposium was held in 94, and the SDGs were published in 2015. Have we begun to make any progress? An interesting question. Let's look back at that data from Primitive Man to 1970, but add in what the average energy use is for Australians as reported at the end of 2019. With the knowledge and technology we have now, I see this as a glimmer of hope. We have slashed over 35,000 kcal of energy from our daily energy use, despite the modern world's seeming demand on technology and transportation to simply remain active in society. The latest Australian reports show an average energy use of around 193,000 kcal per day per person. Incorporating Fuchs and Lorax research, I believe this is a sign of efficiency in our lives and being more conscious of our own footprint in terms of environmental destruction. However, we still have this mountain to climb of changing producers' mindsets and that of big business and to some extent government policy that at the present time is focused on profit and economic gain. I'm not a CEO and I would wager that not many of you listening out there are either. But I believe in local change to spark this change at higher levels. I'd like to introduce a wonderful organisation nestled in the Gondwana rainforest in the small town of Rathdowney, Queensland, just west of the Gold Coast. Wild Mountains is a non-profit organisation specialising in leadership in environmental education and conservation. There are different programs aimed at different age levels, but all carry the same message of the importance of the natural world and what we can do as conservationists. In particular, I want to introduce the Shapers of Tomorrow program that celebrates the transition from childhood into adulthood that adolescents embark on towards the end of their schooling journeys. The focus of this program is to develop environmentally responsible leaders for the future, which is vital as we move to 2030 with the SDGs in mind. Our leaders must be equipped with the skills and tools to make sustainable decisions at all levels of society, including political. As a teacher, the Wild Mountains program always tie into curriculum specifications, which makes the reserve a perfect school excursion or leadership camp. I think it's exponentially beneficial for the students to go when they are young through school to spark curiosity, but also to create an excitement about returning to Wild Mountains to participate in the more advanced programs that follow on. A motto that Wild Mountains use has stuck with me since hearing it. Think globally, act locally, be personally. For me, this embodies the power of the people when it comes to making changes. 
and I think what multiple small scale changes can force corporations and the government to do. There are two other organizations that I believe really have the heart of the SDG number 12 in the very fabric of their being. Climate Wave is a sustainable event management company that at the core of their mission statement is to achieve zero single use plastic events. We have seen the shift in the last five years of the world, moving away from single use plastics and Climate Wave believe there is no reasons that events shouldn't also move in that direction. I personally have been to concerts when where everyone leaves there's a sea of empty cups, food containers, cheap merchandising scattered across the floor of the venue. I didn't connect the dots until learning about Climate Wave that all that waste has been bought, sold, used for less than 5 to 10 minutes and discarded to become landfill in the matter of a 2 to 3 hour concert. It's ridiculous when you really boil it down. Again, shifting our habits by acting locally can affect a greater change in the world and hopefully one day limit or even cease the world's production of single-use plastics. Climate Weave have been able to divert up to 98% of waste from landfill by implementing their sustainable waste management systems at events. This includes separate bins for different material as well as helpers or angels at this waste stations to help people dispose of their trash responsibly. With this amount of dedication, there is no excuse to continue on with the wasteful events of the past. Applying this to a school community, it would be great to have Climate Wave come to school to teach the students about different methods of waste disposal. The follow on will be implementing a disposal system within the school to promote this sustainability by removing waste from landfill or with the education from organisations out there on the front lines tackling these consumption issues head on. Oz Harvest is another organisation that I see are directly linked to SDG number 12, in particular in abolishing that one third of food wastage. Oz Harvest delivers meals to the most vulnerable. Recently, they've delivered their one millionth meal to a vulnerable family in Cairns. The primary goal of the organization is to cut down the waste of food by giving it to the people who need it most, by offsetting the environmental impacts and the logistics of getting food from plant to plate. They also highlight that 4.4 gigatons of emissions are produced in food production cycles. Another facet of the organisation is changing consumption patterns in people of Australia. Only buy what you need to drive production levels down across the economic sectors behind food production. Again, Oz Harvest in schools is a great way to present facts to students around practices they might have thought were mundane or obvious, for example, eating or buying only what you need. Highlighting this as a serious issue when it comes to sustainable living will hopefully trigger changes in the students' personal lives, which may also affect those in their immediate vicinity, maybe the rest of their family or their friendship circles. The main message is that there are local initiatives currently working with goals that align with the SDG number 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. For teachers, it is important that we use these resources to create a better world for tomorrow by changing our behaviours today. I've become more aware through some research into these fantastic organisations and initiatives and I feel empowered to change to create a greener future for the next generation. I encourage you to read more from all the resources that we have discussed in this video and begin to make changes today. Remember, the 2030 Agenda, the SDGs and sustaining life on planet Earth is in your hands.